Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. First of all, I just wanna say if you're noticing anything on my face, it is because I recently had a skin procedure done and I'm just in the process of peeling. Um, I've talked about this before, it's called microneedling and I do have a video as part of my vlogs up on it. So if you are curious to know what microneedling is all about, um, you can find that on my channel. Um, or again, if I'm smart, I will link it up somewhere in the cards. So today we're gonna go ahead and play Tetris Effect. This is a game that I've absolutely been obsessed with. It's a game that I really enjoy because the results are immediate. I absolutely love Tetris. It is so much fun. I've been playing Tetris pretty much ever since, I wanna say since I was a kid. Other Tetris games I've played include Tetris 99. That one I have for the Nintendo Switch. Almost every single day I play Pokemon Puzzle League. One of the other things, because I've got lighting up today, so hopefully I can see, I actually need glass, I'm farsighted, uh, sorry, I'm nearsighted, so this will be interesting to play. Tetris games I find are a little easier to play without glasses, but I would say 99% of the time I do game with my glasses on. All right, here we go. This is so over the top for Tetris, but I love how it looks. Just the opening screen is so pretty. And as you'll probably have learned over the last couple of videos, I am a simp for really great art. As I mentioned in the Stellar Blade demo when I was playing that, gaming is one of the ways that I love to enjoy art. So you're not gonna find me quite often in like a museum or an art gallery. You're gonna find me playing video games and I just love the modernity of consuming. So this title screen is incredible. So let's go ahead and just press any button like it says. So there are a couple of different options in this and I'm just gonna go through each one. Journey mode is the sort of, think of it almost like a story mode. So it tells you, it, it's almost like telling a story through the different music backgrounds, layouts. Effect modes is just different kinds. There are different kinds of um, modes that you can play to, um, you know, just for fun. I usually pick effect mode because it is more in the just for fun realm and I usually pick something that's like very basic, especially if I'm a, on a lunch break. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick effect mode for now. I'll see how much time I have if I can do a journey mode, but yeah. And the cool thing is you can see what everyone's doing or like everybody who's logging in to Tetris Effect, like what they're up to. And everyone's represented by a different sort of, um, I like to refer to it as a Patronus, <laughs> but it's not a Patronus. Like they'll see the little glowing animals that are just sort of, hanging out there and they're they're hovering around somebody's got like a planet i think but people can choose these different avatars and that represents them as they're wandering around the world so i'm gonna go ahead and hit play there's like marathon zone marathon ultra and sprint there's also master which i've never played because i'm not that good um i'm very very basic when it comes to my tetris play i'm gonna go ahead and pick the chill marathon because i mean chill right like how can you not <laughs> so i'll hit that um select which stage you'd like to play in so i think there are i haven't played okay i played the da vinci one but i'm gonna try i don't remember the pharaoh's code so i'm gonna hit that one first you can also change like the, um, oh, I don't like these blocks. You can change how close or far the blocks are, but for now I'm just gonna leave it. Whoa. Yeah, definitely didn't, don't remember this. It's a little bit tougher to see with, um, with no glasses, but that's okay. <laughs> Get some combos, which is a lot easier when you build up the bricks. I have to move this up because I cannot see. <laughs> I think this goes until you die. I have to double check that. Tetris was probably the second or third game video game that I was introduced to. The very first game I was actually introduced to was Mortal Kombat. I was six. 
and I was visiting, it was my mom's friend's place and there were some kids there who were acquaintances, I guess. I didn't play, but I watched them play and I saw them punch, I can't remember which characters, but they punched somebody, it was the, it was that stage um, where the pit is and I watched them punch somebody off, oops, the pit stage and thought it was the coolest thing ever. I was like, whoa! I've grown up with like wrestling and stuff, so for me that was like normal. That was considered violent <laughs> in the 90s, at least in, in our friend circles or my mother's friend circles. Tetris I saw being played at school. There were these kids, there was like an area just outside our elementary school gym and the kids, there were kids that would play video games there and there was a boy I had a crush on. He was playing Tetris and I watched him. Anytime I see a Tetris game, I'm like, let's go, let's play. Um, I've got friends who are really good, like they'll just keep hitting the down button and they know what they're like, they're doing because they can process a lot of this really fast. I'm a little bit faster typically with my glasses on, but uh, I do really just play for, to just be chill and to just not have to worry about my work because um, I do have a day job. <laughs> this is very interesting music. Yeah, I've never played this level before. So for me, it's like, what the heck? Oh yeah, we're, we're not doing very well. <laughs> the blocks rotating are also throwing me off. I was raised by a single parent, so I never really had access to any sort of video games until I think I was 10, like my own sort of personal console. I had a Game Boy that my dad gifted me when my parents split up, but it was confiscated because my mom didn't want me playing with something that my dad had bought me. There we go. Whoa! Oh, oh, we're still going. Okay, my parents were so bad. They they used me in a lot of their divorce proceedings. So it was not fun. It was not fun. But I did lose the Game Boy when my parents were in the middle of uh, divorcing. I had that Game Boy probably for months. And then when I turned 10, I got a Nintendo 64 for my birthday. This sounds so lame, but one of the things that I, uh, I promised myself when I was an adult, I was like, I'm gonna get at least one console. And, um, and that's what I did. I uh, initially got a PS4, which I shared with my ex. He kept it when we split up. John and I together went in on a Nintendo Switch and also went in on a PS5. I don't know if you guys remember like, how hard it was to get a PS5. We still think, we still talk about that all the time. The story of me getting my PS5 is, uh, us getting our PS5 is really funny. So I was actually working that day and I worked at the time as a video journalist. So I shot my own stories. It was a really complicated job. I'm just gonna bunk this one. Does it ever freaking end? I actually, I can't remember if it ends at hundred lines. During my shift, uh, cause you do get a break. Uh, if you can take it, you're encouraged to take it. I um, went to go pick up a prescription and it was at a Shoppers Drug Mart. And so for those of you who aren't familiar, Shoppers Drug Mart in Canada, they're like beyond your average drugstore now. Like they'll carry all kinds of stuff. So you can go to some places and get like electronics. That was actually where I got my PS4 because I used to work for the Shoppers Drug Mart in the town that I grew up in and they, you know, got a whole bunch in and so I, I bought one for cheap. So I go in to pick up my prescription and this was at the peak of like, everyone's trying to get a PS5 and no one can find one. And I saw a guy at the, with the cashier and he's like asking for the PS5. And I was like, this guy's asking for a PS5. Like, bro, do you not know where you are right now? And the cashier walks out with a PS5 and I was like, holy crap. So immediately, my husband, who was working from home at the time, I was like, dude, you gotta see that. Like, you will not believe what I am looking at right now. And he was like, what? And we had been looking everywhere for a while. Like, it, we were just not having any luck. And he was like, can we get it? And I said, well, I don't have my credit card with me. Like, I have like, I just have like a credit card with a really small limit on it. 
and I don't know if it's gonna cover it. Before I disappointed, like ended up disappointing anyone, I was like, hey, like how many, do you have any PS5s left? They had one left in the back. I was like, oh shit, because there was no way we were gonna find one anywhere else. So immediately I texted him back and I was like, yeah, they got one. Uh, they got one left, she's going to get it right now if you want it, so I can take a look at it. And he was like, okay, I'm gonna go back to, I'm kind of getting tired of this one, so I'm gonna go back and try one of the other, oops. It was, uh, sh she comes out with this thing and I'm like, holy crow. It is beautiful and it's got like the disk drive and everything so it's not like completely digital. I'm like how much is it and I think it ended up being like seven something all in however I was able to redeem some points some shoppers points so I got it for really like I got it for about 500 bucks and it came in under my credit card limit so <laughs> able to get it and it was I just didn't have like my my bigger credit card with me at the time so it wouldn't have been an issue but I don't typically bring like you know the credit cards I use for shopping to go to work I went back to work after I got my prescription and I was running around Metro Vancouver all day with a ps5 in the back of my um, my work truck and no one had a clue so as you can see here I've changed up the um, the selection and this is the da vinci setup they look like gears and this is a pretty mellow one i find this one super chill yeah, this is a little less chaotic than that pharaoh one that pharaoh one was like what is going on oops screwed up that's okay screwed up again i think the big thing for me in gaming how it's changed my life as well. Um, it's what has actually made me <laughs> really interested, that was a bad move. Um, it's made me interested in the incorporation of communications and tech. And we, you know, I spent 10 years in journalism and trying to understand how there needs to be a pivot in storytelling. Just gonna bunk that. Um, that's actually a really cool effect when you screw up. <laughs> so at least I can take comfort in that. But the way it's actually enhanced my skills as you know somebody who's interested in multimedia um, journalism and communications, it's it's been quite the game changer. When I was working in traditional news, um, I was always the person that they went to to ask questions about like kick or well, more so Twitch at the time because Twitch would come up in stories and esports would come up in stories and people were like, I don't understand. Like, what does this mean? Because I was working with a lot of older people and traditional news is always at least five years behind when it comes to, um, understanding tech in this sort of day and age especially when the tech is very quickly evolving all right i'm gonna try another one just because we're coming up on time here i'm still interested in news i think this is the one with the with the song um i'm still interested in news but i follow it more so for my own purposes and just to oh, okay clear 150 lines just to like keep track of what's going on the whole idea is to read different, um, read and consume different sources so that you can make an informed decision is kind of the way I have looked at it. I know the media is a very controversial space, but I think that as long as you are taking the time to read different sources and to inform yourself and even going straight to the source. I, I do find in some cases it's more valuable to go straight to the source. I have done that where, you know, there are some spaces that I don't 100% trust the reporting. And if I, I personally do not feel comfortable with what I've read, I will actually go back and, and double check the some of the source material and it's it's 
given me some clarity. So it just, it all really depends on what you're interested in. I used to be a big city politics nerd, I still am. That's usually what you'll find me consuming. I don't enjoy reading about politics. I find it too divisive. I do read up on politics, but it's just like, <sighs> I think North American politics are a particular breed of like, for me, eye roll. <laughs> for me, politics overall is a soul suck and I am very careful about where I uh, dedicate my energy to. So right now, um, I'm not really playing anything too specific, but my husband John and I have talked about getting the Stellar Blade demo. I'm actually digging it. I want to learn the parry. Um, if you haven't watched that video, it's a little bit of a mess. It's just me immediately trying to play it in 15 minutes, but I had a lot of fun and I thought it was really cool. And I actually didn't know about all the controversy that was going down in that realm until people started commenting. And I was like, what are you talking about? Then I read up on this stuff and I was like, oh my gosh, are we for real? I feel like people need to chill out. It's, it's actually crazy to me what that has become. I think you have to respect the context of where the developer is coming from. I think the question you have to ask yourself is, am I enjoying this game? Like what, what is the purpose of this game? Is it to, you know, criticize her body type, consume fashion? Like how, how am I wanting to enjoy this game? And for me, my first priority is I want to enjoy it as a sci-fi game. I'm not here to pick apart her body and her fashion, even though I kind of did, cause like girl was wearing, girl came to show up, showed up in battle wearing a tie. And I was like, what? I'm gonna stop because I'm running out of time. But um, I just wanted to say that I absolutely love Tetris Effect. I um, forgot how breakneck it can get sometimes, but it's so much fun. And if you haven't had a chance to play it, I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will be back with another video on Friday and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.